Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. What you're looking at here is some random footage I stumbled across on the internet quite some time ago. I kind of liked it. Um, judging by the registration numbers there, the CT, it probably out of Connecticut. So, also judging by that outboard, this was probably filmed in the, uh, the early 60s. So, yeah, kind of old footage. There's no sound to go with it, just kind of video. But, I don't know, kind of need to watch. Wish there was sound. But what are you going to do? So here the guy kind of shows that girl how it works. She's probably concerned about falling, naturally. And then he kind of shows her how to steer it. You, the outboard is fixed forward and you lean to steer. Pretty, pretty neat. And it's got some kind of uh, a dead man switch on it, so should he fall or jump off, it's not going to keep going on him. So, yeah, kind of a kind of a neat concept. And you know, I kind of wanted one. Now, it being on the East Coast in the 60s, very few of them probably made their way this way on the West Coast, and any that did, probably long gone by now. But I figured I'd be able to find one on the Internet somewhere and just pay a small fortune to have it trucked over here. Oh, just so you know, I, I did eventually find one. And it wasn't very far. It was conveniently located at the new Walmart down the street. Well, here it is, folks. It's a little four foot wide, I forgot how long, little tiny stand-up boat. Oops, don't, don't know what else to say about it, really. Uh, last registered 24 years ago, so uh, obviously somebody really loved this thing. Now, judging by the uh, piston and crankshaft assembly sitting on the stand of this thing, this uh, little Tatsu is going to need a little bit of work. Uh, carburetor is uh, there. Not much else to say about it. Flywheel looks uh, near mint condition. Judging by how this strap here is connected, somebody really cared about a secure load going down the road, you know? On a side note, interesting uh, little propeller guard here. Um, I don't think this is a factory little propeller guard setup, but they did a pretty decent job making it. Could be a safety feature in case you fall off, you don't get hit by the propeller. Don't know. Lot two. That's about what you'd expect under here, huh? Crash. All right, engine is somewhat attached with two uh, little half-inch bolts and the standard transom clamps. So I'll pull that off. All right, winch is uh, connected to the outboard. Gantry's there, and baby wants to push the up button. He's just taking a sweet time coming over. Come on. Alright, under the bonnet here we have the uh, Tahatsu gas tank. A little battery. Uh, we're going to save that battery as for for a future battery. At a glance, this tank is pretty nice. Scooped inside of it earlier and it's pretty rusty in there, so it's gone. Fire extinguisher can stay. What's left of the carpet? Can stay. Uh, battery cables can stay there for now. Battery vent can go. Looks like we have these little tie down straps for probably for the battery. That probably wouldn't have been handy. All right, let's strap a new gas tank in here. Well, maybe I shouldn't say strap, more like set in. A perfect fit. Look at that. 
actual seat's pretty nice. All right, up top here, we have what used to be a uh, throttle cable. Would have been nice to save that, fortunately. My engines, that really won't work. So I'm gonna rip it out. Remember the twist grips gotta go. So this would be the back rest for the passenger to sit on. I don't need it right now. I'm gonna remove it, but I'm gonna save it so I can copy and remake it later. It's also a little uh, Velcro pouch. So you can keep your junk. Kind of handy. So back here is where the fuel line runs through there, up in here, and into the tank. So I'm gonna remove this little section of hose and replace it with one long enough to go through the boat. All right, controller is mounted. Uh, what's left of this upholstery isn't gonna last long down the road or on the water. All right, I am dragging this thing onto a better trailer. I'm not taking that hard to freak thing anywhere. All right, outboard sits in this little cavity here. Pretty obvious. Let's uh, slap it in there real quick. Perfect. All right, outboard is on and probably centered. And now for the problem. The Tatsu had a little plate built into it to keep it from turning. To steer this boat, you lean. Uh, that's going to be a little challenging on this outboard, but I'm pretty sure I can just tighten down the steering friction clamp until it doesn't steer. So I'm going to give that a try. So while that's not perfect, it's not bad. I don't think it'll be able to steer on its own, but if you want to strong arm it, you could steer it. So that may work for right now. In the long run, I'll have to figure something else out, but like I said, it, it'll work for now. And this is just a kind of a test to see if the boat's going to sink, so it's it's probably fine. All right, it's registered. I mean, it's still expired, but at least it's got you know more current tags on it now. So uh, let's let's go put it in some water.
This thing is weird. All right, Ryan, I'm off. Well, I got the boat flipped upside down in the uh, garage here. As you saw from that footage, it kind of takes on water. I think most of that is due to some bad drain plugs. Whatever whatever these things had on them kind of was a joke. Those will get replaced. And then there's a small crack up front. I'll, I'll show you that. So we have a previous repair attempt that uh, isn't the worst I've ever seen. Not the best. This is about average, I'd say. But you have a good crack here and a little soft spot. Uh, water was definitely coming in there because when I took the boat out, after it had some water in it, water was coming out of here. So if it comes out, it can get in too. So luckily, it's already messed up. So me messing it up more with my fiberglassing isn't really that big of a deal. If the gel coat was all in one piece, ideally what I would do is take off the top cap and repair it from the inside, then put it back together. That way I don't have to mess with the gel coat. But, since somebody already did that for me, that's kind of out of the question. Uh, plan is to use a uh, high speed sanding wheel on my grinder and just grind down the area, refiberglass it, sand it, paint it, and we should be okay. So, let's see how this goes. Now, the grinder spins clockwise, so that way, so I need to stand on this side of it to not get covered in fiberglass dust. Other than that, this should be pretty easy. like I'm down to the crack and the original repair attempt so I'll keep going a little bit past that Yeah, so it's a uh, pretty pretty ugly mess in here. You can see where the 
repairs were added and the problem with those repairs, they had a lot of air bubbles in the bottom of them. I chased out the air bubbles with my sander and that's what we have left. So that's what we need to fiberglass. Not much to it. If you've ever done any fiberglass work, you know how much this sucks. Now I can't knock the original repair because this stuff's not, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to work with. Unless you've done it a thousand times, it's not going to be perfect. And even if you have done it a thousand times, it's not going to be perfect. Fiberglass also has a problem, not really a problem, but when you, when you repair it, when you're adding to it like I am, it's never going to be as strong as its original shape, form, or bond. So I'll go a little bit further with the resin. We are in a kind of a time limit here. I shouldn't have done that far with it. I guess it didn't matter. All right, that's okay. And naturally, you should wear gloves when doing this. But this is a fiber, how to fiberglass tutorial. So I'm not. This is basically a don't do what I'm doing tutorial. So that's why I'm going to do everything wrong for you. You're supposed to use so much resin per area of mat, and you'll never get it saturated if you actually use it. If you spray the resin, whole different story. If you apply it like I am, using the correct amount, good luck. So, when you're doing a repair, expect to use more resin than you're supposed to. See these air bubbles that are forming on the corners? That's what caused the original to fail. At least my opinion. So, we will do what we can to make sure we don't have those. Not really air bubbles, it's actually where the stuff isn't sticking. I'm going to do two layers. Move it out the best we can. Get rid of any air bubbles between the original layer and the second layer we added, or the, the original layer and our second and third layer. Now, ideally, you have a vacuum bag set up here, but for such a small area. And this is just a gallon freezer bag cut in half. So as you can see, at least I hope you can tell, it really allows you to press it and form it down where you need it to be. This is, a, in my opinion, a much better way to do it than just laying the glass on there and Hoping everything works out. This feels pretty, pretty smooth. I think when it dries, when we cut off all the excess and sand it down a bit, we'll probably be able to make it look halfway decent. All right, the stuff is sitting up pretty quick, which is good. Uh, now what I need to do, so I don't have to sand all this off, while it's still kind of workable, I'm going to come, I'm going to cut off all the areas that I need to feather edge out. 
that way till later these things are going to be like little needles I'm going to have to cut out of there so if I do it now it be a little easier on them to sand Well, it is solid as a rock. No doubt there. Let's get this uh, fiberglass bag off of here. Take a pretty decent repair, I'd say. I'm just gonna have to kind of feather edge it out, you know, all right here. So that's a lot of sanding, that sucks, but it's part of the process. Now, in the camera, this may not look that good, and I, I fully understand. The feather edging I did between the gel coat to the new fiberglass edition, it's, it's pretty on point. I could go over this with some 300 grit sandpaper and you would never know that there was a transition there. So far, it's a pretty good job. Same with down here. I do have some tiny, tiny little pinholes here and there. Nothing that's really a problem. Some glazing putty would fill that right in and it would look like a pretty pretty good repair. Uh, the only thing I don't like is this edge. It continues along the boat, but right about here, it starts to kind of divot in where I had to kind of rebuild that corner a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another layer of fiberglass just to the edge, let it dry, and then shape this back to normal, and we should be, we should be on point. So I have a little tiny strip I'm gonna add, some resin, and we'll try this again. Yeah, and that, and that feels great. I can, as I'm rubbing my hand across it, I'm kind of forming the edge, and you can really feel the bumps going away. It's, it's working out quite well. If you, uh, if you're knocking this plastic bag for me, try it. It is the way to go. dry enough. It is. It is feeling good. I'm liking it.
All right, I switched over to a 320 paper. And we're going to start actually working on it. Let's smooth this a little more. But it's not, it's really not that bad. I could hand sand the corner a little bit, a little, a little more feather edging on the sides. Not much. We're, uh, we're looking good. I know it doesn't look like much in the, in the video, but this thing feels like a Corvette. It is. It's quite good. I like it. All right, now to uh, fix the gel coat. Okay, area's masked off where I need to do the gel coat repair. For the gel coat, I'm using a, a Rust-Oleum product. Um, this is basically what it looks like. It's a, a spray-on easy DIY type of gel coat repair. So, just gonna do some light coats here. You can see my air bubbles now. I wasn't actually able to feel those. I was running my hand over it, so that's a little unfortunate. I'll let that set up and get some more of this down. All right, I just sprayed another coat on there. Looking pretty good, I think. And uh, probably rip the masking paper off here in a second, let it dry, and smooth it out a little more. All right, paint coat is dry. Got some 600-ish sandpaper. Gonna kinda go over it a little bit, kinda feather edge it out. But as I hoped, it's not that off. I mean, it is and it isn't. Well, good enough for government work. All right, I'll flip this thing back over. All right, boat is flipped back over. First thing I want to address are these uh, lack of a valve here. Plan is to install some of these things. This is a little uh, drain valve. Turn that, stays put, lets water out. That'll be a nice little addition. Uh, we need to drill a one inch hole into the back, which is, you know, pretty standard. Everybody's got a one inch drill bit sitting around. Getting, gonna use one of these step bits, taped off the end. So in theory, drill the tape, we'll have a one inch hole. So, we am to drill battery and we'll give that a try. All right, these things look cool. You may be thinking to yourself, oh, well, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lose the drain plug. That's going to work great. Looks good. I assure you, my friends, looks are deceiving. They have this little seal inside of here, and that doesn't actually seal. You, you know, I tested this by putting this in my mouth and blowing, and air comes out the hole. So to remedy this, all I need to do is swap out that seal with an O-ring, and that seems to make it work. So if you see some of these and you want to get some, go to your local hardware store and find an O-ring that fits kinda, and you'll be in business. Now, I also went to bed last night telling myself I was gonna grind, you know, grind down these holes, refiber glass, and fill them and paint them. But let's be honest, that's just silly. So, that's where the plug's going. I'm gonna silicone it in there. I'm gonna put some silicone into the old uh, screw holes, and that'll, uh, that'll work for now. So I got it lined up in there. Straighten it out a little bit. Yeah, sideways doesn't really work all that good. I'm gonna drill some holes, smaller than my screw, right there in the center. All right, now I did 
the silicone and screw it in. All right, now just got to clean off what's left of this carpet and make way for the new stuff, really. Well, that got all the loose stuff off. Looks for everything that's remaining. I'll have to come back with a razor blade and just scrape it all off. Not a big deal, just take a little while. Well, as you can see, it's uh, it's looking a lot better, I'd say. Uh, now we just need some type of fabric-y, carpet -y stuff for the top. All right, carpet is down. It's not really carpet, it's that... Uh anti-slip uh, surfboard turf type mat stuff the kind of stuff you'd see on a jet ski uh, the reason it looks so good is because I did it ah kidding I uh, I kind of struggle with doing things especially fabric you know perfectly like that so that's why I commissioned the father to do it kind of suckered him into it took him forever he said he'd rather redo the pontoon boat than one of these things again because it took him a long time to get these cuts all nice and straight but it looks great. Thank you for doing that. Now it's time to get the uh, front trunk back on, or the funk. So I'll do that now. Also, I put uh, nails down where the holes are so I don't have to drill or worry about trying to find new holes. Little tech tip. That's what uh, these are. So I line the two hinges, put the hinge back on, put those in, and the rest of the hinge holes should just kind of line up. And now for the handlebars. And that's pretty much it for now. Let's uh, talk about a trailer. Uh, the trailer it came with is one of those Harbor Freight trailers, and it doesn't hold it at all. In fact, uh, it kind of just blows off of it. It's pretty funny. Unless you have straps going everywhere, it falls right off the trailer. And no bow stop. It's pretty annoying. Uh, the trailer I had it on when I tested it. It, uh, that was the trailer I borrowed off my little nine foot boat project. So, when I sold that boat, the trailer went with it, so it needs a trailer. So, let's transition into that. All right, this is a trailer I picked up, low, low price of $300. It came with a Kawasaki stand up jet ski. The plan was buy the trailer, sell the jet ski, get a free trailer. However, it seems I seriously overestimated the value of a stand up jet ski because ain't nobody interested in that jet ski for 300 bucks. So we'll, uh, we'll see what this thing turns out to cost me, but for now it's 300 bucks and a jet ski. Let's, let's hope that changes. It looks to be an old boat trailer that somebody added this top deck to. Um, a little bit shoddy workmanship, a little bit questionable welds, that kind of stuff. For the most part, yeah, it's not that bad. plan is to cut all of the design flaws and 
poor workmanship off this thing so that I can install my own shoddy welds and poor workmanship and make it fit my boat. So let's do this. Uh, I figured it would take two hours of grinding to get this to this point. Well, the walls took 24 minutes to get off, so that was a piece of cake. I've been fighting with that expanded metal decking for an hour now. Every last little tab on that thing was welded down. That was a nightmare. Uh, luckily, the weld wasn't, I would say, the best. I was able to break a lot of them off, and the ones I wasn't, I was able to come back with the grinder with the saws all and take care of it. Now, I don't want to knock the welding job on this. It's, it held up, and I don't know if I could do a better job. But luckily, that deck wasn't that well welded on, because that would have been a nightmare. But here we are. I'm going to go through, clean up all the, uh, I guess you could call them burrs, all the little pieces of metal that broke off when I was trying to bend or break it out of there. So, it's got a uh, clean up to do. I'm going to remove the center beam right here. Probably the uh, rear one there, too. So, I'll knock those out. Let me show you why. So this is the main body of the thing, and these are our cross braces. They're below for some reason. Uh, that might be good. You're trying to load a quad or something on here, because you only got to pick it up a few inches. The problem is we are what, a little over nine inches from the ground there. When you have the lower unit from the boat hanging down, you want a little more than nine inches of clearance, because that lower unit's probably going to be inches from the ground. That's not a not an ideal situation, and they're all kind of like that. And that is what we are left with. I would like to do some more cleaning up, but I just broke my last uh, grinding wheel, so I gotta go pick up some more of those. But for the most part, it's done anyway. Well, it's ready to start having metal added to it again. It's pretty flimsy, it's got an incredibly heavy thumb weight. Um, once the metal came off the back, it kind of changed everything, but I think once we get some more structure to it, that'll fix itself. Well. I have removed all of the old uh, fencing and modifying and everything that was done to this trailer and then installed my own. So it's kind of the same concept as you can tell. I think the execution was a little better and the design was a little better and in my opinion I think it looks a little better. Um, it'll have a plywood decking on it. Well not plywood but you know two by six decking. Um, that'll be good if I want to use it for other things. The only thing is with this hole cut out back here for the outboard. It's uh, kind of made for the boat. Now I could use it to move other stuff and I'm sure it holds it just fine. Like if I wanted to move my little tractor around or a quad or something it wouldn't be an issue. But I suppose if I were to put an ATC on it backwards on the end uh, that would be a problem. Anyway, I'm going to paint it and uh, register it. <sighs> get the, the wood on it and hopefully get a boat on it. And here it is. I think it's a lot better. I need to get a spare tire mounted, but worry about that later. 2x6 deck. A little cut out in the rear for a, uh, well, for the outboard. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty basic trailer design, I, I think. I think it looks a little better. Uh, the cut out in the rear may not have been necessary. Probably shouldn't have done it, but here we are. Uh, Ford truck taillights. I kind of like them. Nice and strong. I'll show you the... Uh, License plate here. So, if you're familiar with trailer license plates, they're kind of flimsy. This has a nice steel bracket. So, all in all, I think it's a uh, much better trailer. Probably be able to use it for other things too. So, gonna put some uh, carpeted bunks down and throw the boat on it. We have two little six foot little pieces of carpet here for the middle. And we have these two L shaped bunks for the sides. That'll keep the boat on the middle of the trailer where you want it, keep it from sliding side to side, and in theory it won't fall off the trailer anymore. So I'll slap these on, we'll get the boat back on the trailer. 
Yeah, that's a pretty good fit. Almost like the trailer was made for it, and I measured the bunks. It's, it just, just worked out great. So that's its new spot. It doesn't fall side to side, and even if it should, it's not going to go anywhere. I have room on the sides where I can walk along if I choose to. Um, that'll be handy if it's in the water while you're you know, prepping the launch and you walk around it. You don't have to balance on the trailer. And then once the boat's off of the trailer, then you have a nice little platform. You put a chair down and just kind of hang out in the water. So yeah, I, uh, I like it. Well, the boat's back in halfway decent shape, as is the trailer. So we're off to a, a pretty good project here. Um, the only thing is I haven't been able to find a replacement to Hatsu for it. Uh, so that's kind of a challenge. So now I really just need to find an outboard for it. Oh! Alright, outboard is on. It never really dawned on me to check the fitment of this thing. It barely fits. I have an eighth of an inch on each side of that uh, steering section, the midsection, before it wouldn't have fit. So, it does. That's all that matters. But I should have checked it first. All right, um, I installed a roller where the lower unit's gonna hit. I'll show you why in a second. All right, ground clearance between the jet and floor isn't bad. We're about eight inches or so from the very, very peak, which is doable. I mean, if you forget to put the motor up, you can tow it down the road like that without hitting anything. Also getting it in and off the launch ramp. Really, it'll be fine, so that'll work. I wish it was a little taller, but it'll work. All right, I'm gonna winch the boat forward and we'll see what happens with my roll. So the theory here is that will kind of protect the lower unit and it'll also get some weight off of the boat and half onto the, you know, the trailer. Um, probably won't have it go that far forward. I want to keep the roller, not so much on the cone, but on the flat to the lower. So it'll drop it down a little bit more. Um, also, right here, my bunks are riding on the boat, so the corner of the boat supporting the weight, not the bunks, so I'm going to have to move the bunks forward a little bit. Alright, this uh, was a little challenging. I needed to find a way to lock the outboard forward. I didn't want to use the steering friction adjustment to lock it, because that doesn't really lock it, it just makes it pretty tight to where you can't turn it, but you can turn it. Uh, I looked at the Tatsu, it used this bracket bolted and wedged between the, uh, the uh, midsection there. It worked quite well. It used a piece of wood, a couple of bolts. It looked pretty rigged, but it worked. So I went ahead and copied theirs. Let me show you how I did that. Their design, I mean. So it's just a piece of steel bolted into the uh, steering bracket here where the uh, tiller handle would attach. Um, this needed to be the exact size to go into here, and the engine can still tilt because this tilts onto here. So this and this, they don't actually move. Now you see some scrapage over here, that's from when I was just test fitting it. But that is, that is how it's locked down, and it, it's working quite well. And like I said, that's, that's not something you would ever usually need to do. So now you can mount the controller somehow, and then just kind of hook everything up. Well, we're pretty much ready to go now. I have added a spare tire to the front of the trailer using the same uh, wheel studs as the rest of the trailer. Reason being is I was moving it around and I kind of lost a wheel. So I needed to buy a new rim since I destroyed that one, but make a good spare. And I lost all four of the uh, lug bolts. So now we have two spares in there should it ever happen again. Uh, boat is, I think, looking good. I uh, think we're ready to go.
Well, I'm out here in the early morning on a newly repaired boat with interesting controls on a uh, untested outboard with an unfamiliar lower unit by myself. What could go wrong? Okay, the outboard is warmed up. Um, seems to have a little hiccup at an idle, so not a big deal, but notable. Have to fix that later. So let's uh, head to the open water and see how this goes. Alright, we're off. On the same page, the outboard is supposed to stay running. That's, that's the goal of the outboards. I don't know what that's about, but glad we went up further. Primer bulb is decently hard, so it's not, probably not a fuel issue. Well, it's probably a fuel issue. Uh, the stator coil power pack could overheat, but if that was the case, it wouldn't fire right back up. So, we'll have to address that. If 
I get this thing to idle right, I won't have to snorkel to look for stuff. I mean, you can clearly see straight to the bottom. I don't know if you can. There you go. There goes the fish. So, I'm gonna look for some sunglasses. Maybe my phone. I'm gonna head to shore. I'm gonna put my tripod on the uh, beach there. Get a yeah, little school of fish. All right. Anyway, I'm gonna put my uh, tripod on the beach and then go for a little run. That way I get some footage of me going. Also, I wired in this jet ski stop switch. Pretty handy. All right. Yeah, it looks like a good place. a floating beer bottle so hopefully it's got money in it if not at least we're getting trash out of the river although it's empty with a lid on so a little weird No money, just a random beer bottle. Might as well look for some junk while I'm here. This canoe has been here for, God, six months. Nice canoe. water drive and now I'm in deep water. It looks kind of neat. A little jet stream of water. Anyway, I'm gonna go to the other side. See if I can find any junk.
Eh, he knows what he's doing. Kinda. Alright, moment of truth. Hey! Hey! Well, it did fine. I mean, yeah, the outboard doesn't run that well. I have to do some fine tuning on that. But for the most part, boat did okay. Outboard did okay. Trailer made it here, and I didn't lose my phone. So all in all, I'd say uh, it was a nice little trip out. Uh, I did about an hour and a half of heavy throttle. I uh, used two gallons of gas. So, um, yeah, that's that's about average, I'd say. Um, that's all there really is to say about this thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video. I don't know what I'll be doing next time, but hopefully something fun. I really like these uh, small, weird boats. If I had a, uh, you know, just a pile of money, I'd buy and fix them all. Get a little building, open a little weird boat museum or something. I think that'd be kind of cool. All right, everybody. See you next time.